What's up everybody, I'm Raf, and this is Bar to Be the Bearded Dragon, and you're watching Red Ribbon Reptiles. In our reptile room tour video, I mentioned how Bar to Be and our two leopard geckos were actually purchased at PetSmart, and today we're going to talk about why that wasn't such a great idea and it was a rookie mistake. Fair warning, the later part of this video is going to get a little bit, uh, it's going to pull on some heartstrings. Not for no reason, it's just something that I think if more people knew about, we'd be able to not have this problem so much because people would stop supporting where PetSmart gets their reptiles and start supporting local breeders, small breeders, people that really care about their animals. And we're even going to throw PETA under the bus. So that's enough chit chat. We're going to go ahead and roll the intro in just a second, but before we do, make sure you like and subscribe so that you can see more of our reptile content and support us, and it means a lot. So here we go. <laughs> It's me from the future with my little homie right here. If you guys want to skip ahead to see the ugly truth about where PetSmart animals are from, you can skip right to this time right here because I rambled a little bit about other things. Actually, that's the time where I'm going to start talking about PETA and then we get right into it. So I hope you guys like it. Oh, oh, okay. He's probably going to slip. So first off, I want to talk about a couple things that PetSmart actually does well. The first thing I'll talk about is their adoption section. So what they do is they make deals with various animal shelters, things like that. And those shelters will send puppies, cats, whatever to PetSmart. And it just gives the animals more of a chance to be seen by more people, which increases the likelihood that those animals will end up finding a good home. And that's what happened with Macho and Mochi, and we're really glad about that. The other thing is the convenience of it and the number of locations. Uh, this one hits close to home with me, because living here on the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, there are no reptile shops. So if Bartaby needs her crickets and she needs them quick, you know, maybe I'm out of bugs or, you know, my bugs aren't breeding the way I want, I want them to, so I need to get something quick. It's right down the street compared to the next closest actual reptile shop is Reptile Rapture in Wisconsin. And it's a five hour drive. So I definitely appreciate the fact that PetSmart does have those locations. So if I need something in a pinch, I can go and grab it. Now we're gonna talk about some of the not so good things, products that PetSmart sells and the care advice and the pamphlets that they give you and all that stuff. First of all, talking about like care advice, if you go and get a bearded dragon, at PetSmart, they'll try to sell you a 40 gallon breeder tank and tell you that the bearded dragon can grow up and live the rest of its life in it. A 40 gallon is a third of what Bartaby lives in. And honestly, if she could, she'd probably ask me for more space. And it's a good amount of space. It's definitely enough, but that's 120 gallons. And we're talking like just enough, you know, 40 gallon is nowhere near enough. They are active, they move around a lot. On just that aspect, I mean, I guess you can fix that with just doing your research, but as you'll see later on in the video, there are some other reasons why to avoid getting your reptiles from PetSmart. And still talking about the care advice that they give at PetSmart, they have chameleons in there with just standing water at the bottom of the enclosure. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, some chameleons will take standing water but a lot of them don't recognize it as a water source because they need to see that movement. So that's why it's best to use a dripper like we have right here. But yeah, don't trust what they tell you or what's in that pamphlet at PetSmart. Now moving on to the supplies and care equipment that they sell. One big thing for me is calcium sand and just the fact that they still have it on their shelves because people will buy it because they'll think, oh, you know, it's sand and it's got calcium in it. This is going to be great for my bearded dragon. It's not. Calcium sand is actually associated with a lot of cases of impaction in captive reptiles because the calcium in it will entice them to want to eat it. But it's not like play sand, however, which is 
relatively safe. I mean, not obviously far to be a, a handful of play sand, that would be bad news. But the little bits here and there that she might take in if she's hunting crickets or something like that is negligible. Whereas calcium sand, they might be so inclined to take a nice bite of it. And that can definitely cause impaction and even kill your reptile. Another thing is those hot rocks or those basking rocks, whatever you want to call them. Those aren't great. Definitely not great because it's hard to regulate them. Even with a thermostat, I mean, you can tape a thermostat to it, but now you have adhesive in your reptile's enclosure. And as we know, if some scales get stuck on some like duct tape or something like that, and then they try to get away, you can have tearing of the skin and the scales and all that. And it's just, it's bad news. Another product that I just, I hate to see it marketed to reptiles is the nighttime red heat bulbs. Here's the thing. Light is light. That's it. So um, their natural photo period is going to be light during the day and no light at night because the sun goes down and the nighttime happens. And as responsible keepers, we should try to at least emulate that on some level, right? So if I have Bartaby's regular heat bulb, it's just a regular white light bulb, a regular light bulb with well with the heat but the color is regular okay it's light <laughs> but if i have that on all day and then at night i put on the red bulb and then the next morning i turn on the regular bulb again she never got her nighttime and this can throw all kinds of things off with um especially if you're trying to breed like the daytime the photo period during the day but we're not going to talk about all that it's just the fact that you're not giving your, like a diurnal reptile is not going to know to sleep or a nocturnal reptile might not know to come out. And then people are going to say, well, they don't see the red light. They don't see the red light. Well, check this out because I learned something new. Reptiles are actually tetrachromats. Now, what this means is in their eyes, they have four different types of cones. To put that in perspective, humans are trichromats, so we only have three types of cones. So it's obviously, I don't know what Bartaby is seeing, but it's likely that she sees a much broader spectrum of colors than I do. So if I can see the red light, she sure as heck can see the red light. And on top of that, to keep your reptiles healthy, you should let the temperature drop at night, not super low, you know, depending on the species and whatnot. It's normal where in the outback of Australia, yeah, it might be over 100 degrees burn during the day, but it's not going to stay 105 degrees all night. So you find the range for bearded dragons 70 to 75 uh, throughout the enclosure is fine at night, and Bartaby does fine with that. But it helps them regulate everything. It helps their hormone cycles. It helps their knowing when to be awake, when to be asleep. And so having those red lights kills both of those. It kills the, the healthy night drop for the reptiles. And it kills the chance for regulating their photo period. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about with the products that aren't the reptiles themselves are the rodents are just so dang expensive. If you have, I have four snakes. If I wanted to go every week to PetSmart, and that's how I got my frozen thawed rodents for them, I would just, I'd give them my arm and my leg, and then hopefully I'd get enough food for the four snakes for the week. Yeah, it's just kind of crazy. You're better off finding wholesale somewhere, but that's neither here nor there. It's just something to think about. If you're going to get a snake, uh, don't depend on going to PetSmart all the time for those rodents, because the snake will end up costing you a lot more than you paid for it. Okay. Now we're gonna move on to the bad part. We're gonna go into where PetSmart gets their reptiles. I'm gonna play some clips that I, I hope nobody enjoys um, if you're watching my channel. It's one of those things where you kinda, you kinda have to see it to put, put it in perspective. Before I get into it, those clips that I was talking about, those are from PETA's YouTube channel, PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. First, I want to talk about PETA a little bit. PETA doesn't believe that we should keep any reptiles. Okay, but now this is opinion, but hear me out. I think, again, we have the two cats and we have 20 various herps, if you include frogs and then uh, a couple inverts, you know. 
I feel way worse for the two cats and we spend all day with the cats. We do everything we can for them. They have plenty of toys, plenty of enrichment opportunities or whatever. I feel worse for them being in the whole apartment than I do for Bartaby being in her four by two by two because um, talked about a couple of videos ago, the prefrontal cortex and planning and problem solving and all that and how reptiles, they can definitely think and they definitely have personalities like we were talking about, but they don't necessarily understand. It doesn't seem like they do anyway, captivity. You know, if you keep them healthy, you don't have like, you can keep a chimpanzee, which is a mammal, obviously, pretty close to us, right? And if you keep them in an enclosure any size, if you keep them in an enclosure, it's a matter of time before they go, what am I doing in here? You know, why did they put me in here? I don't think reptiles really have that. They're more defensive anyway in the sense that they're pretty low on the food chain, you know. Um, Bartaby bugs out anytime anything goes over her head because she thinks a bird's about to swoop down and get her. So, if I provide her a place where she can thermoregulate properly, she's at good temperatures, she has enough food, and not being attacked by predators and things like that, I think she's happy. I really do. That's how I feel about reptiles in general, really. So, I think reptile keeping is a lot more ethical than most other types of pet keeping, maybe except fish. Now we're going to keep talking about PETA. There was, I don't remember the whole case, I'm not going to, you can look it up, you can look up PETA arson and you'll find this, but... Somebody burnt down somebody's building because I believe it was a research facility where they probably were using animals and I don't know how they were using those animals. So I'm not saying I'm 100% on the research facility side, but here's the thing. Somebody burnt that place down and PETA swiftly paid out $70,000. I don't know if it was bail or for the legal team or what, but they shelled out big money for that guy. The thing about arson, right, for an animal group to support an arsonist, but assuming it's like any other building I've ever seen, there are animals in or around the building. And especially if it was a research facility when they were doing, where they were doing tests on animals, there are animals inside that building. So let's just, let's just call it like we see it. Maybe the guy's intention wasn't to kill animals, and maybe PETA didn't give the guy money because he killed animals. But PETA shelled out money to a guy who murdered some animals in a fire, which is a ter probably, I mean, I don't know, I've never gone, but I assume fire would be a terrible way to go. Now, another thing, because PETA's so serious about people not having pets, so much so that I guess that they take in animals. PETA will take in animals. Right? Like, as if they were a shelter. They'll take in unwanted, abused animals, things like that, Barbie. A lot of the animals, within 24 hours, are euthanized. People for the ethical treatment of animals. Euthanizing animals. So, so now you're looking at the question of, is my virtue signaling more important than these animals and PETA says yes I'm sorry that's just it, the the cat's out of the bag literally or PETA threw the cat in the bag and suffocated it but anyway that's besides the point I just wanted to put a couple of those things out there to just kind of give you the idea that I'm not a big PETA guy um, but I do love animals you know I I truly love animals and I wouldn't euthanize them after 24 hours of having them and um yeah, I mean, as long as you're taking good care of your animals or, you know, person X, Y, Z, whoever is taking good care of their animals, I don't have a problem with it. I have a problem with this place that PetSmart gets their animals that PETA went and exposed, but that's not everybody keeping reptiles. This is just one garbage doo-doo place. Without further ado, here we go. PetSmart gets their animals from a breeding mill. A lot of people are familiar with puppy mills. Same kind of idea, but with reptiles. And this place is called Reptiles by Mac. This is a place where they aren't pets. You know, these reptiles are not pets whatsoever. They are money-making machines, baby. Our good friends at PETA went to expose this place. And here are some of the things that they found. Some of the animals are being bred way too young. Even if they can facilitate 
the egg laying or, or reproductive cycle, not in a healthy manner, right? But there are guidelines if you want to be a responsible breeder on how big your female should be, let's say, and this and that. You could probably get away with breeding a female ball python before she hits like 1700 grams, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be as healthy as if you did maybe wait because then the animal is, is stronger, it's more robust, it's able to facilitate reproduction. So another thing about the health of these animals while they're breeding there is they're pretty much all malnourished and dehydrated because they're they're not cared for. They're maybe kept alive for the most part, not even all of them, but they are not cared for. Speaking of that, so it's also you know, I take up, Bartaby takes up a lot of space in the apartment by herself in her enclosure because that's what she needs and that's it. But if I'm, you know, alternate reality, I'm someone who is just trying to make money off Bartaby. Why would I use all that space for just one animal? Why not shove a bunch of them together? And then on top of that, why would I pay to put adequate substrate adequate hiding spots, adequate climbing branches. These animals are in bare enclosures, just stacked on top of each other. A lot of the time fighting, right? Because these are pretty, almost all reptiles are very solitary. So it just causes problems with fighting, fighting over food. If there is, if there is any food, you know, maybe the dominant one in the tub of 10 bearded dragons is taking all of it or most of it and then most of the bearded dragons won't get any, all kinds of things. Another thing is, so I keep my enclosures secure. I don't want them to meet any sort of something that they shouldn't or something that could hurt them if they encountered it outside of their enclosure. But not at Reptiles by Mac, because why would you spend the time securing an enclosure when you can just get pieces of cardboard, and cover it in double-sided tape, and set them on the floor and wait for the reptiles that got out to get stuck to the double-sided tape and then maybe rip off their own arms, rip off their own tails trying to get away, ripping their skin like we talked about with adhesive and reptile enclosures and how it's not a good idea. It's messed up. They, yeah. Because <laughs> even, even then, because uh, even if they wanted them to just be money-making machines, now you're just killing your money making machine so now you're not only just a businessman which you shouldn't be if you're dealing with animals in any way you could be a businessman but there's you know the pet and the care aspect to it as well but then you're not even being a good businessman i mean you're just letting these animals out how much does a lid cost what is this maybe the most jarring part of all of this is the staff there that clearly don't care or you know what i don't even want to be mean to just people trying to make an entry level wage you know they're at least desensitized to it which can't be good for them psychologically to be dealing with animals in this state but so like i said you got 10 bearded dragons together right two of them are probably male at least they're gonna scrap they're gonna and i hey i love a good scrap you know i'm a wrestler uh do my jujitsu and all that i love a good scrap but now you're putting the animals in a position where they're forced to do it. And likely they don't fight recreationally like humans do sometimes. But, but these fights can result in serious injuries and damage to these animals. In these clips, you're looking at reptiles with no, you know, missing an arm, missing a leg. I guess that's interchangeable with most lizards. Not all lizards are legless lizards. And then to hear the staff talk about how they just do it and they'll, you know, if they see an injury, let's say on the, on the claws, they'll take the whole arm off with a wire cutter. And that's just, it's too much, man. It's too much. Just, you know, I, I'm definitely also kind of outspoken against not vets, general vets considering themselves exotic vets. You know, I think that's a big problem because all sorts of reasons. Watch this video. You're a reptile breeding mill who makes however much money 
from PetSmart selling them these animals. You can get a vet. You can get an exotic vet in there. Come on. No, it costs too much money. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to breed these money makers right here. These are my money maker machines. And then the worst of it all, um look, euthanasia is something that, that occurs with pet keeping, pets of all different kinds. And it, it's sad, but sometimes it is the right choice. Uh, hearing these employees talk about just putting a reptile in the freezer to kill it. And then, like, it gets frozen. They you know, this isn't me. I wasn't there. I promise you I wasn't, because I would have... Something would have went down if I was there. But just talking about the animal like looking like it was in its last little attempt before its body just shut down trying to claw its way out of the bag or whatever that they threw it in and then threw it in the freezer ah, it's just crazy man it's just crazy okay so that's it it's over um i hope we're all sufficiently depressed and riddled with anxiety after hearing all this but um you know it's something that i think if more people just knew about the problem would maybe start going away. Maybe less people would buy animals at PetSmart and PetSmart would say, oh, maybe I don't need to stock this many animals. So yeah, on a final note, uh, PetSmart's not completely evil. I just don't think they should sell reptiles unless they get them from smaller breeders that are going to be careful, just like how any of us should get our reptiles. And that's that. Also, uh, you know, PETA could go fly a kite somewhere. Catch me outside, PETA. But I mean, uh, yeah, that's all I really have to say. You can look at us for being as being hypocrites for getting three animals at PetSmart and then making this video. Or you can look at us like people who learn because people do learn things over time and people will change their attitudes over time. And, you know, I'm comfortable with that. I know that that's what happened to me. But if you want to call me a hypocrite, go ahead. We'll take the comments, take the engagement. Yeah, that's really it. Maybe you didn't like it, but if you if you learned something, if you thought this video was important, go ahead and drop a like and subscribe to our channel and you're going to be seeing plenty more reptile content. So once again, Bartaby, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time.